So what are you getting at? <laughs> it's very simple. This book is not a description of what people do. It's a description of what people ought to do. Of course women leave their, their mothers and fathers. From when little girls are five years old, they're paging through bridal magazines already. When little girls are 10 years old, they picture their wedding and they see their dress in exquisite detail and they see the staircase they're going to walk down and they see the cake and they see the reception and oh yes, next to them they see a tuxedo with a blank where the face is, which just has to be filled in. Isn't that true? Absolutely. What 10-year-old boy thinks of his wedding? Excuse me, what 45-year-old boy <laughs> thinks of his wedding? I'm telling you, guys left alone on this barbaric island of savages, guys have the capacity to prolong adolescence <laughs> beyond all previously known records. <laughs> and so the book says, we got to teach the man to leave his father and mother because as long as he's still linked conceptually to his father and mother, he's thinking in terms of being taken care of. And he's not ready for marriage until he's willing to be the taker carer of himself. So he's got to learn to leave his father and mother. And then he's got to cleave to his wife. And they should become one flesh. What does the one flesh mean? I mean, that they should have sex? I mean, is that all it means? Well, wait a second. Now here it gets interesting. Because we have, in ancient Jewish wisdom, a lengthy oral tradition of what was taught at Mount Sinai and what was then taught in the longest graduate study program in the history of humanity, namely 40 years in the desert with Moses, Joshua, and the elders. What do you think they did all the time? The actual walking in total, if you add up all the walking during those 40 years, it comes to about six days. What were they doing for 39 years and 361 days? Studying the manual and learning everything that God explained in detail to Moses, which he explained to Joshua. Now, this has been handed down, and one has to be a little bit careful. Have any of you heard the word commentators? Yeah, forget it. Anyone know what the word commentator means? No, because I've just told you to forget it. <laughs> you do not know the word commentator, but you do know the word transmitter, meaning somebody who receives something and transmits it to somebody else. My father was a transmitter. He learned it from his uncle, and then he transmitted it to me, and I'm right now this evening privileged to transmit it to you. Commentate is a bad word. It suggests that you're listening to my commentary. If that were so, you should throw things at me and get rid of me. Because there's no reason for you to listen to my commentary any more than for me to listen to your commentary. We're all human beings. We're all smart. We all have good ideas. We can all come up with things. If you're listening to just what I'm coming up with, you are wasting your time completely. Absolutely. You're only not wasting your time if I will remain utterly faithful to the task of being a true infiltrator. And that means just transmitting what the boss said. Well, how do I know what the boss said? Well, it comes down student from teacher to student, from father to son, student from his teacher, and so on all the way. But wait a sec, what then happens when we find we have more than one Explanation. Have you ever heard the expression, well, this commentary says this, but this commentary says that? Forget the word commentary. This transmitter says this, and this transmitter says that. Well, I wish they'd get their act together so we know which one is right. What's the answer? In order to understand this, I want you to bear with me so well that if you hear nothing I say this evening, you will hear the next three minutes. Imagine, if you will, some horrible calamity. This is ridiculous and unthinkable, but the Chinese invade North America. 
using weapons we sold them back in the 1990s and the 2000s and the 2010. Good old American know-how. And um, what then happens is they want to clear us all out of the state of Washington because it's the best state in the area. And what they decide to do is they want to make room for many, many Chinese people from the Chinese mainland to come and resettle here. That means they've got to get rid of us. They were going to just wipe us out, but, but these days people frown on that. So what they decide to do is move us all the way to the north of Alaska, to the Arctic Circle. And it's brutally cold and miserable. And we've all been dislocated. We don't have our homes. We don't have all our comforts. We don't even have our cell phones. We got nothing. And you're feeling pretty miserable. And you gather together, and pretty soon you link up with people, and you hear, hey, anyone else from the Tacoma area, anyone else from all nations, anyone here who knows Mark Bills? Any? Yeah, yeah, I, I met somebody about two miles away in another tent camp over there. Pretty soon, over the course of the first few months, you actually assemble as many of your family and friends and, 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 and faith family people as you possibly can, and you're all together, and you say to yourselves, you know what? It looks like we're going to be here for quite a long time. But one day, one day we're going back to the state of Washington and we're going to rebuild the society we once had, all right? And the years go by and you realize you're getting old and your kids are growing up now. You need to convey the mission to them. You with me? They, you want to make sure that before you leave this earth, you can confidently know that if your children are the ones who one day are victorious and are able to go back home to Washington, that they can rebuild everything you had here. So you've got to teach them what it was. And you've got to say to them, if the redemption doesn't come in your time, make sure you teach your children. And so by, just by the nature of human beings, just the fact that you're different from me and you're different from the person next to you and you're different from the person in the row behind you, you will tend to emphasize different things. So, for instance, I'm going to tell my children, oh, you can't imagine what Washington was like. You were too little when the Chinese invaded and sent us up here, but you can't imagine how beautiful the water was there. Puget Sound, it is, the, it is to sailing what Jerusalem is to religion. I mean, it's, it's the place to go boating. It's just so wonderful, and I want to tell you all about the whole area. So, my children grow up telling their children that the state of Washington is all about boating on beautiful waterways. Meanwhile, somebody else says, you know, we had tremendously civilized communities. You start telling your children, people don't honk at each other on the road like in this other place we heard of, New York. And, um, and so they teach their children about courtesy and, and civility. And then there's another family that teaches their children about uh, another aspect of, of the state of Washington. And they say, you know, we had just the greatest food in Washington. I mean, we had salmon and we have marvelous fruit in the summertime. It's just a terrific place for food. Now, several generations go by and it's almost time to go back to Washington and representatives of the key families get together and they say, we're going back, we need to know what do we rebuild? My descendants pipe up and say, oh, it's simple. You build boats and you put navigable um, uh, buoys in the waterway so everyone can go boating. And they all say, and that's what Washington is? Say, yep, according to our tradition, that's what Washington... Somebody says, no, that's not right. Uh, according to my tradition, Washington's a place where there's salmon and there's fruit, more food than you can possibly imagine. Really? So which is it, waterways and boating or food? Somebody else says, uh, you know what, it's, it's neither. It's actually a civilized people that are just nice to each other and polite to each other. Well, now I've got three competing views. Which is it? It's all of them. I don't get it. You're not agreeing with each other because you have to take yourself out of your mind limitations and go beyond what you see in front of you. You've got to, in your head, integrate those three stories and make them one. Even though, after generations, in the frozen wastes of Alaska, you can't even conceive of what life is like in a place where the climate is pleasant and there's enough food and there's beautiful boating and people are nice. You can't imagine it. 
It doesn't matter. In principle, you understand that by preserving and protecting each of these traditions, that at some point, if you are able to, you can join them all together and come up with a dream that will become a reality. That is what happens when we've got different traditions. Different commentaries and commentators? No! Different transmissions. Because the truth is vaster than can be captured in just one story. So therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. Well, yes, there was a guy called Rashi who lived from the year 1140 to the year 1205 in France or Germany, switched back and forth every time they had a war, the border moved. And that's how it used to be. And um, what happened is that uh, Rashi was a great transmitter. He taught everything loyally and with high fidelity, high definition, everything he'd been taught, he conveyed to his students. But then he saw that his students were not remembering everything, and so he started writing down shorthand notes. And to this day, in many, many, many Hebrew Bibles, the notes of Rashi are put at the bottom. But they don't stand alone. They only stand in conjunction with an oral explanation of what they're talking about. Do you follow what I'm saying? And then we got a guy, uh, we got a guy called um, Ramban, or um, in English he's called Nachmanides. And he lived about a hundred years later than Rashi. He lived in Spain. And um, he writes and transmits everything that was taught to him so his students will be able to refer to his notes. These notes are what are sometimes called the different commentaries, but they're not, they're the different transmissions. And which one is right? <laughs> well, neither one is right by itself. It's only when you manage to integrate the two of them. Do you follow what I'm saying? Right? If you think about it, if I asked you to draw this bottle, well, I'm giving you a two-dimensional sheet of paper. There's a problem, isn't there? This bottle is three dimensions. It's got height, it's got width, and it's also got depth. And you've got to now portray this on one sheet of paper. So you can do one drawing that looks like this. The outline of the bottle, put it there. But is that really what the bottle is? When you show it to somebody with no life experience and you say, this thing here can hold water for you, I don't understand. You showing me something that could be bent out of a piece of hanger wire. How can that hold water? Well, you don't understand. I'm sort of showing it to you from one angle, but really it has depth as well. Well, you're going to have to show me a drawing that explains that. Well, I can't because this is a piece of paper. It doesn't have any depth. So what do I do? I got an idea. Why don't we just draw what it looks like from here? And what do you end up on the paper with? Two circles. An outer circle and an inner circle. The outer circle is the width of the bottle and the diameter of the bottle. The inner circle is the neck and the, and the lid. And now you got him really confused and he says, I don't understand. Is it this drawing or is it that drawing? Which is it? And, his, and the right answer is, you're going to have to, in your mind, you're going to have to put them together. And you'll see the whole truth. And so... What we have then is, and therefore shall a man leave his mother and father and cleave to his wife and they shall be one flesh. And Rashi says, and the result of that is they're able to produce babies. And the Ramban says, I know what Rashi says, but that's not the story. The story is that by cleaving to one another and becoming